I'm uh, Dr. Monica. I'm a consultant neurologist and head of the pediatric and neonatology department in Zuleika Hospital. I'm here past eight years and taking care of uh, uh, level three in ICU, a tertiary care in ICU where we take care of babies 24 weeks and above. I'm more than happy to be uh, being part of uh, our pediatric conference which is going to be held in May this year. I'm really looking forward and quite excited about it. Welcome Dr. Monica. Uh, can you please explain what is jaundice? Yeah, I mean, uh, to explain it in a simple word, it is like yellow discoloration of the skin and the white part of the eyes that's called sclera. Actually, it is caused by a pigment called bilirubin, which is produced as a waste product when the hemoglobin is being metabolized and the iron is out of the hemoglobin. So whenever this bilirubin goes higher than a value which is acceptable for any um, newborn or a child, it is called jaundice and uh, it has its own consequences when it is going beyond a certain acceptable limits. And what are the different types of jaundice? Uh, when we talk about uh, jaundice in a newborn, it's absolutely different from what's happening to children and the adults. Uh, in neonates, it could be physiological and non-physiological. The non-physiological jaundice could be either due to overproduction or it due to under secretion or it, both the things could be playing uh, a role in a particular baby. And then there is an entity called uh, idiopathic jaundice where the cause is not known. And very peculiar uh, type of jaundice which is uh, specifically related to newborns is called a breastfeeding jaundice and a breastplate jaundice. So these are the different kinds to just name them few. Uh, and how do you see this current situation of jaundice in UEE? Oh, that's a very good question because you know what's happening uh, in uh, Western world uh, where you know things are under control completely. They have seen in past one decade that there is a resurgence of a problem of jaundice. It's called connectress when the jaundice affects the brain. That's coming up higher and. Uh, so the people have got really got alerted in the western countries because of this when i looked into that i was trying to look into the data in uae i couldn't get hold of any written data or document to really say how much it is really in our particular part of the region but i have my colleagues in different uh, hospitals and i had a talk with them like in latifa and dubai hospital and then uh, we had a talk with the private hospitals all, or, all around uh, Dubai. Then even I went and asked uh, uh, Tawam Hospital and Al Raba and Cornish and Abu Dhabi and Elaine. And uh, I got an approximate idea that you know within past uh, six months to one year uh, they are doing uh, exchange transfusion for a very high jaundice around three to six, which is a big number, you know. And uh, actually, uh, when you look into the reasons why this is happening in uh, the Western world as well as in our region, the things are that the babies are getting discharged quite early in uh, these places. This is due to either insurance or you know to, due to the uh, logistics, you know, the money issues or whatever. And then these babies are not being followed properly. Uh, the reasons for not being followed properly are either due to some protocols not in place uh, when and who should be followed and where they should be followed and also it also is the reason could be that the mothers and the parents are not that much aware of the issues why they should be following up in a particular days so yeah, this is the second reason and the third reason is when the follow up comes uh, actually the babies who are born in a particular hospital don't go to the uh, same hospital to follow up. They just try to find out nearby clinics or the other hospitals which are near to their homes and uh, uh, then you know they are disturbed. So these are the reasons I think uh, is the problem which is coming up and we should look into it. And what is the consequence of having shown this? Uh, if our babies have shown this beyond a certain limit it may cause brain damage to these babies and uh, the term uh, given to that is called connectoris which itself mean, means that the brain damage due to the pigment called bilirubin. Now uh, 
uh, no one wants our babies to get brain damage and uh, these babies when they come to the early stage they may come with you know poor feeding lethargy abnormal movements called seizures and uh, they if they don't get treatment well in time they may even die and uh, in the later phases they may come up with uh, issues like uh, you know cerebral palsy when developmental delays there atetosis mental retardation low iq and dental dysplasias none of neither the parents nor the pediatricians nor the neonatologists would like their babies to be in this situation Dr. Monke, I heard you will be speaking at the Arabic Pediatric Medical Congress taking place in of May. Can you please share with us what would you be covering at the Congress? Yeah, actually, um, just now I actually talked about you know uh, the problems of the jaundice that made me really interested to talk and cover the same topic. And uh, here I would like to be you know. Uh, taking a workshop uh, so that you know the pediatricians around who are taking care of these babies in the OPDs should be well aware, and even those uh, neonatologists who have who are forming the protocols in their unit should be participating. And uh, my major uh, area, which we focusing on, comprehensive care of the babies with the jaundice in the first week, uh, to come up with the protocols and the ideas in the birthing institutes. to uh, make them to follow these babies at i mean uh, know that at birth or uh, while they are discharging the babies uh, they should be well aware which babies to be followed up at the early and then uh, my other focus would be in this workshop would be to have a, a real plan when we have babies with the connectors how to treat them how to pick the uh, problems and then we have few cases in our day to day basis the babies are coming in uh, opds to a, a pediatrician with a prolonged jaundice or a neonatal cholestasis when uh, they don't know what to do so to make them aware uh, that what should be done to such kind of babies so my intention is to do a workshop so as to avoid connectors in our region and why do you think the arab pediat- pediatric uh, Uh, medical congress is an uh, important platform in UAE oh i'm really uh, very excited and i think it's really a very good great platform because this is a place where if you see the agenda of the uh, congress the policy makers as well as the leading pediatricians they are coming up together into the same platform so that gives you a chance to you know interact with each other and come up with the protocols which are really required and uh, uh, that gives a really a good chance then also uh, it gives a chance for the pediatricians who are taking care of the babies uh, who are uh, actually getting uh, uh, facing problems in uh, treating those babies and children uh, when it comes to the subspecialty problems are there like you know we have subspecialty like cardiology gastroenterology endocrinology neurology and neonatology and then even endocrinology for the pediatric cases so uh, we will have uh, international and the national speakers who would give us uh, their case uh, studies their presentations and they will have workshops to take care of these uh, sub specialty issues where these will help the pediatricians to you know take care of these kind of pediatric patients in day to day practice and also uh, uh, i feel that you know one re- uh, one place which is uh, our uh, region is lacking is the research and this platform is really giving us a very good place where uh, we are going to give a real importance to the research as uh, uh, i know that there is a uh, uh, area where uh, they are going to give a research award to the best uh, research done on the pediatric uh, problems So I feel that this platform is really, really important as far as the uh, all the things for the pediatric and pediatrician is concerned. So, Dr. Monica, what are the initiatives Lake Hospital will do during 2014 for jaundice? Ah, uh, yeah, because uh, we have been, uh, you know, into too many uh, initiatives. I just wanted to share with you. like uh, uh, because it's quite related to this uh, thing like we wanted a baby friendly hospital uh, to be there so we wanted exclusively breastfeeding to be initiated in our hospitals mm-hmm. and we were just failing just by talking we cannot do anything so we have to take initiative 
to go it further up. So uh, we uh, just try to do, uh, uh, try to focus on different kind of areas where we can uh, take care of it. So what we did is that uh, we had put it on the, uh, you know, we have uh, areas where the mothers are sitting uh, before entering to the uh, antenatal clinics. So we have put a big TV screens over there where uh, they are being uh, regularly shown uh, kind of uh, uh, education for uh, how to do breastfeeding, why sh uh, what is the importance of breastfeeding. And uh, also we have given them pamphlets when they are uh, coming for their antenatal packages uh, in which we are uh, telling them the importance of uh, uh, all the areas of concern and uh, health of their babies. And then we have antenatal classes which we are taking care and uh, teaching the mothers uh, the importance of the breastfeeding, what all the problems which the babies might day-to-day uh, -day, uh, face and so how to handle those, when should they come to the doctor. So the same platform we are going to take uh, help and uh, to build up the you know, um, uh, uh, mothers uh, and the parents. Uh, they should be knowing about jaundice because if they know about jaundice they will be more aware of it and they will be also asking uh, questions by themselves so we are introducing that into the system and also we have seen that the uh, as I told you that the babies are going for follow up at different places so we are following a very strict protocol of uh, the follow up of the babies we are actually giving them uh, 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 the date and then when, the, when when we are making booking, booking for their uh, follow-ups, we are actually giving the message on their phone that this is the date when you are going to have booking with the pediatrician. And then we get a, give another kind of a message the day uh, they are supposed to come for the follow-up that today it's like kind of a reminder, today is the follow-up time for your uh, baby with the pediatrician. So this gives us, you know, this increases our uh, follow-up of these babies. Secondly, uh, we ourselves have uh, formed a protocol which I feel every hospital should be following a protocol to uh, pick up uh, babies uh, before we, we discharge which baby are going to get jaundice. So you know uh, we have a kind of um, curves uh, where you know uh, if we uh, see that our baby is following into a uh, curve where it can be high risk that they may develop jaundice, we call them early. If they follow, uh, come into a uh, curve, it is into a medium risk, then we call it late. And if it is a low risk, then we call on the fifth day. So that's how we protocolize them uh, to call these babies so as to not to miss them. And then the other initiative is that, you know, we teach, uh, uh, ongoing teaching is there for the nurses, for the registrars, and even for the general practitioners and the pediatricians who are sitting in our OPDs to pick these babies much early and uh, to start the treatment at the earliest. So these are the different initiatives we are uh, doing. Also we had done an initiative for nocturnal aneurysms because you know that was